Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time? Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe I wanted this summer to be remembered. Next Friday I'll be three years since they told me that they didn't think I'd make it more than three years. And that's it then. We're celebrating that. Hi, I'm Corinna for the Fan Carpet and we are here at the premiere of Kindling at the Curzon Cinema in the heart of London. This is a coming of age drama that is sure to maybe make you shed a few tears. So, Connor, this is a very poignant, important film. How did you come about to produce uh, and write this film? Uh, yeah, write and direct this film, essentially when I was 21, two people close to my friendship group passed away. And um, it was in that I sort of wanted to explore how young men deal with grief. Because for me, I saw my friends open up in a way I never, never had seen before. And I think it's really important to see men on screen in that new light. So um, it came out through that. It was a short film originally. And then essentially felt like the story wasn't, wasn't out of me. So. Um, Eight years later, we're here with the feature, and yeah, essentially, it's my love letter to the ones I've lost, and essentially putting men on, you know, men in a new light on screen. I do think grief is something that people don't talk about enough, as well. Especially in this country, people are very shy to talk about these things. They don't like to talk about death. They don't like to talk about anything like that. Do you think this kind of film is going to help people actually start sharing their feelings a bit more and actually face death, not always in such a morbid way but in a joyful way like you're not joyful but you know in a more heartwarming way yeah yeah no it's totally that i think you know there's two things that are inevitable like we're born and we die and you know my experiences of grief are that you know there's always gonna be a really hard really horrible period but a lot of it is celebrating life and the memories we've made with people so for me the best thing about you know we've done we've had a few festivals acceptances we've been out to the states of it and europe and you have people queuing up just to tell you their experiences of grief they want to hold that your hand and say you know i've just lost a son or i've lost a friend and you know, we need to talk about it. It happens to all of us. And to actually be able to, I think we need films, music, art to allow us to express. And hopefully that's what this film will do. And what do you think is your favourite part of the film? Like, if you were to think about all the different moments, which bit to you is the bit that means the most for you? I think there's a really lovely moment at the end, at the fire scene, the culmination moment, where you almost have the choice to see it as a negative and a positive. And the music all comes together and the boys are dancing around the fire. And for me, that's always the bit where I feel like that's the... That's that happiness and grief thing. It's almost like, for me, that's the bit where I think, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to put out there, this real joy in grief, and that's a memory that I'll never forget. So that, that end for me is, is something I'm dead proud of. What's the bit of thing, happiness and sadness at the same time? And I want to ask you about the soundtrack. How did you go about choosing the perfect songs for this? God, so we, the, on the short film, we worked with a composer called Harry Brokenshaw, and he's the only crew member that came onto the feature. So we've been writing, because the film's completely original soundtrack, um, so they're all, they're all songs written for the film. So we've been writing them for about seven years, back to back, you know, and even down to, so he's written all the songs, and even down to the credits song, he wrote that in three days while we were in the final mix to before it went in the final credits. He really was like up to the wire writing all that music. So, um, it's, and it's that thing of, Whenever I've gone through big things in my life, you've always got music as a soundtrack to that moment. And um, I guess that's what the film's intending to do, give you this band and this music that encapsulates the moment in time for these boys. That's it, music and film, they're the perfect combination to get those emotions out. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. I really can't wait to see it. And um, definitely something I relate to, so I, I really look forward to seeing it. Thank enjoy you. Enjoy it, enjoy it. I hope everyone else enjoys it too. So much, thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, honestly. I really yeah. Enjoy it, yeah, honestly. no, I, I know. Yeah, should, I'm really proud of it, honestly. So, like, I really hope you do enjoy it's it. Big, big moment for you. It's a really nice moment. So for me and him, we just grew up lo loving films. So, to be here, like, after nine year old kids wanting to make films together, it's really cool. Yeah. So excited. Cool. So Thanks excited. so much. Enjoy your evening.
And now it's time to wrap up what was really a fascinating set of discussions here on the red carpet this evening. This is a film to really get people questioning things about their emotions, about men talking about emotions, and of course the things that we don't like to talk about in this country, which is really the awkward conversation about death and moving on from that. Anyway, the sadness aside, we're all here in a very joyful capacity to celebrate what's actually a true story and something of great meaning to many people here this evening. We're about to go and watch the film. Do have my tissues at the ready. But remember, if you would like to find out more about other films, other premieres that we do here at the Fan Carpet, you have to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I've been Karina Jane. I still am Karina Jane. And I'm here for the Fan Carpet. Good night. What we're doing now means that I can be there with you. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, 